Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss the properties of acids, bases, and salts. Today's essential question, what are the differences between acids and bases? Please fully answer the essential question in your summary. Acids, bases, and salts. Acids, bases, and salts are all ionic compounds, which means they're made up of an anion and a cation. All of them break apart into ions when dissolved in water. Let's start with a discussion of acids. So properties of acids. An acid is a compound that produces hydrogen ions, or H1+, when dissolved in water. This is the definition of an acid. Again, an acid is a compound that produces hydrogen ions, or H1+, when dissolved in water. That's important. You need to know that. That's the actual definition of an acid. Okay, and then we have strong acids and weak acids. So a strong acid is an acid that easily releases hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. You stick that acid, a strong acid, in water, and those, those hydrogen ions just fly off. Okay? The reaction of a strong acid with water is not reversible. So if we had a reaction, a strong acid plus water, you would end up with a one-way arrow. Um, and this leads to a lot of hydrogen ions in the water. Okay, we also have weak acids. Weak acids only release some of their hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. Okay, that means that, that when you drop a weak acid into water, the hydrogen ions fall off the acid a little more reluctantly. Okay, and so um, the reaction of a weak acid with water is reversible. So if we had written a reaction of a weak acid plus water, you would have the reversible arrows. Okay, and because the um, weaker acids are more reluctant to release their ions, their hydrogen ions, you're going to end up with less hydrogen ions in the water. All right, now let's go through a list of a few more properties of acids. Acidic compounds give foods a tart or sour taste. Um, so some examples would be lemon, orange juice, pretty much any citrus is kind of sour. Um, tomatoes, vinegar, um, those sour candies, those jelly candies with that sugary stuff that's really tart. Um, that sugary stuff, if you, if you look at the, at the um, ingredient list on the back, you'll see that it contains, most of them contain either citric or phosphoric acid. So those are also acidic. So things that are very, that are very tart or sour. Aqueous solutions. Now, an aqueous solution, remember, is something dissolved in water. So an aqueous solution of an acid is an acid dissolved in water. So an aqueous solution of acids can conduct electricity. We call things that conduct electricity electrolytes. Um, another really important um, property of an acid is that many metals react with aqueous solutions of acids to produce hydrogen gas. And acids react with compounds containing hydroxide ions, which are OH1 minus, to form water and salt. So acids react with, ion, with compounds containing hydroxide ions to form water and salt. So you'd have an equation like this. An acid plus something OH1 minus, the something being the cation, right? There'd be a cation there produces H2O plus some salt, and a salt is a binary ionic compound. So that's what we have to go over as far as acids go. Next up, properties of bases. A base is a compound that produces hydroxide ions, or OH1 minus, when dissolved in water. And this is a definition of a base. Again, a base is a compound that produces hydroxide ions, or OH minus, when dissolved in water. 
All right, we have two types of bases, strong bases and weak bases. Strong bases easily release hydroxide or OH1 minus ions when dissolved in water. The reaction of a strong base in water is not reversible. So if you had a strong base and water, the, you would have a single one direct, unidirectional arrow. Um, and because the hydroxides are easily dissolved in water, and because the reaction is one way, you're going to end up with lots of OH1 minus ions in the water. That's what makes a strong base a strong base. We also have weak bases. Weak bases only release some hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. The reaction of a weak base with water is going to be reversible. So we're going to have the two-way arrows. And this is going to lead to less OH minus ions in the water, thus a weaker base. All right, a few more properties of bases. Bases taste bitter and feel slippery. I've always been bad at coming up with foods that are bases, um, but if you've ever gotten any soap in your mouth and it kind of makes your mouth pucker up and almost dry out your tongue, that's a bitter taste. Um, so soap is a base, um, deodorant is a base, um, and both of those feel very slippery. Bases are also good conductors of electricities, like acids, and thus they're good electrolytes. And bases react with acids to form water and salt. So if you had a base plus an acid, which if you remember is going to be, is going to have, um, is going to release hydrogen ions. So it'll be H, which is a 1 plus, plus something. So that's your acid is going to produce water and salt. And that looks very rem reminiscent to another equation we just talked about, in which acids react with compounds containing hydroxide ions, so OH1 minus, um, to produce water and salt. So another way to write this is acids plus bases, because if you think about it, something with an OH is really going to be a base, so an acid plus a base produces water and salt, which is what we wrote right here. A base, which is something OH1 minus plus an acid, which is H plus plus and something, produces water and salt. Okay, and that's it for the properties of bases. Is it an acid or is it a base? Um, so, for the last part of this lecture, we're going to talk about how you could tell if an ionic compound is acidic or basic or neither, neutral, um, basically a salt. There are several ways to determine if an unknown substance is acidic or basic. Um, we're going to go over a few of them right now, and you'll be testing other ways throughout the, throughout the unit. So, the first way is using something called litmus paper. L acids turn litmus paper red and bases turn litmus paper blue. So how do you remember which is which? The way I remember is that bases are blue. Bases are blue. So bases turn litmus paper blue, bases are blue, and acids then turn litmus paper red. By the way, the red is more of a pinky color, but we call it red. Again, litmus paper. Acids turn litmus paper red, Bases turn litmus paper blue. And the next way to tell if, it's, if an unknown substance is acidic or basic is something called the pH. And the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Neutral solutions have a pH of 7. So an example of a neutral solution would be water. Acidic solutions have a pH of less than 7. And the smaller the number, the more acidic. So something with a pH of 0 would be very acidic. And something with a pH of, let's say, 6 would be 
barely acidic. And then we have basic solutions, which have a pH of greater than 7. And in this case, the larger the number, the more basic. So something with a pH of 12, or we could say 14, is very basic. And a pH of, let's say, 8 is barely basic. So the way you want to think about this is sort of like a number line with pH 7 neutral being in the middle. And the farther away you get from 7, the more acidic or the more basic you get. So farther getting going down from 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, you're getting more and more acidic. And going up from 7, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you're getting more basic. All right, that's it for the basic properties of acids and bases. Have a good one.